is Gregory Adair, who will be followed by Mary Ellen Bach. Good evening. Um, I've had the privilege of speaking at, I believe, four of the meetings because I've been following the Park Service around trying to hopefully uh, break into a, a zone where, with my own voice and without the amount of study I wish I had into this plan at this point, I say the right things. Um, when I was in Los Angeles a while ago, I pointed out that it's National Park Service policy to remove buildings and infrastructure, and particularly hotels, from the center of the national parks to the periphery uh, when they have been replaced by the private sector. And I, I, again, I, I, I wonder whether at some level this, the, uh, the comment on these plans uh, in a public forum in two minutes is it really just a, a fleeting opportunity to make a little sense with the public as opposed to prepare comprehensive uh, comments. But I would like people to, to consider here that we've seen so much development in the Yosemite area and, and so much additional congestion, um, people being drawn in for business conventions and so on. That's been the whole push in the national parks. And I wonder whether uh, it might not be time to just call a halt to that. And whether this Wildest and Rivers Act seems to me um, actually does that, puts the brakes on that, and, and makes us reevaluate humans are going to use this place. I, I know I'm not beginning to touch on all the things and feel the time breathing down my neck, but um, it seems to me that the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act is a wise act, like, like the Wilderness Act. It, it, it looks back at us from, from the area of law and says, you are not everything. These creatures, these plants, these waters, the free flow of clean air are as much it has a, as much importance as, as your uh, right to be here, uh, the rights of the, of the natural world. And uh, I'd like us all to consider that collectively uh, when we consider the difficult questions like, like congestion, human use, limits on our own use. The cost of taxpayers and our resources for reducing this. I protest that there is no conservation or preservation alternative in your draft that protects the river corridor in the Central National Park to the fullest extent provided under the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act. In 1987, Congress gave three full years for this to be done, anticipating that scientific studies would not only be done for this purpose, but that they would be read, considered, and taken into account in order to fully protect and enhance this river corridor. The Wild and Scenic Rivers Act states that, quote, primary emphasis shall be given to protecting its aesthetic, scenic, historic, archaeologic, and scientific features. I protest the Park Service's use of management zones and a river protection overlay. These are not even mentioned in the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act. The Act calls for a quarter mile protected corridor and one eighth mile for tributaries. The East Valley and El Hotel, under the stipulations of the Act, should be classified as scenic. If this was followed by you, then not only Merced River and its tributaries, but Yosemite Valley itself and El Hotel would be protected from your devastating large scale development plans for these areas. I protest your five alternatives and your plans and ask for a conservation alternative for the river. I protest that your development plans and the ambitions of the concession year have influenced this river management plan. I protest that the finalization of this plan and the valley plan is being rushed by the Clinton administration. Thank you.
find in their hearts to all get together and continue to find the best way. We're going to be a big happy family again and we can live in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, I came to Yosemite when I was six years old in 69. Uh, fell in the river in Wawona, we were actually camping there. I ended up living in Wawona when I first came back to the park um, to work. However, I uh, was here climbing in the 70s, living in Camp 4. Um, I went off to college, came back to work here um, because of my experience here. Um, I've also now worked at Tuolumne Meadows Lodge for seven years. Um, at the Badger Pass ski area for seven years, and I was at the Wona Hotel for seven years. Um, I've had a myriad of experiences in the parks. I now set up the High Sierra camps. I spent a lot, great deal of time in the backcountry. Um, I feel I'm a true woodsman. I spend a lot of time out in the woods. I have environmental concerns, and I want to see preservation. However, my emphasis at this time is for visitor experience. I feel that it's important that future generations, regardless of the culture today, are allowed to experience what I experienced um, throughout my long history of being in Yosemite. Um, I am afraid that some of these alternatives of this plan do not provide for the experience um, that was available to me and that the culture today may not preclude what the culture in the future may provide or want for Yosemite. Um, I, want to emphasize that um, Alternative 5 may be the best plan. Um, it provides for river protection in the full corridor, however, it doesn't mandate changes immediately. It allows the Park Service to do the studies and the research. It provides a step-by-step -step plan, and it provides for future implementation plans to identify specific areas of the river to protect or preserve or um, enhance. Um, it does give the ORVs required by the, by the um, Wild and Scenic River Act, um, but it does not provide for the river protection overlay, which I think is a horrible mistake at this time, and throwing all of, our, um, all of it in one big basket instead of an incremental planning process where we could identify those areas of the river that need the most protection and implement them as funding allows, as time allows, and as we have the time to do the research to see what the visitor and and the natural resources need in those areas instead of blanketing. Thank you.